Hey everyone, so I have another Doctor Who episode reviewed and we're now into the series 5 episodes which is very very exciting. I did review the first episode of series 5 when it aired so um, I'm not going to be talking about that. I'm talking about The Beast Below which is the second episode of series 5. Now I did mention this briefly when I did my sort of, I did a, if you haven't seen, a series 5 halfway overview and then a second half of the series overview. That was like over, over a year ago um, of course. And at the time I liked this episode, now I still really do like it. Its significance for the rest of the episodes I haven't I don't think was that great because The Beast Below is very much a standalone episode. It was a very good platform for Amy. This was obviously both the second episode for both Matt and Karen to us. Um, but obviously the Doctor has been around for many, many years. Amy is only just getting to grips with time travel and spaceships and aliens and weird things. So for her it was a very, very good platform. I think it worked very well. We weren't given too much information that we as a viewer couldn't cope with. We were still learning about Amy and that worked really well. Uh, I found that to be very effective. Um, the, the creatures here, the smilers, the, they were taking over. They were uh, they were really creepy when you have the normal smiley face and then the head turns around into a frown. And then when that frown turns around and he's like, Neh. when he's gritting his teeth, that was the, the scariest thing I've ever seen. That's absolutely terrifying, especially with the purple cloaks. Because it's like, what's under that purple cloak? You really don't know and sometimes I think I don't want to know either. So that is very, very scary. I do think the creatures there are very well done. If you've seen some of my other Doctor Who videos, you will know that I hate the fact that the, the, the more recent creatures, with the, with the exception of the silence, the silence are very much, well they're, they're not called the silence, it's a religion, but the, the silent beings um, are very unique. But generally we just have beings that we can't see, or just general human-like creatures. I love the creatures that have had a great level of creativity put into them. And there was some in series 6, um, but it started to sort of go a bit loose towards the end of series 5. But the Smilers I absolutely love. I think it's fantastic. The concept of the erasing of the memory I really like because that's so simple yet so effective. It's a thing with the retcon in Torchwood. It works absolutely perfectly. I really, really like that. Um, Liz 10. Liz 10 I think is a really brilliant character. Um, now it does upset me because you have Liz 10. My brain somewhere in here just goes Liz, Liz Slade and 10, 10th Doctor. It, make, it makes me think of school reunion, so that's kind of upsetting. But I was actually making notes the other day during a lecture. Um, um, I wasn't during a lecture; I was recalling my notes, and we were talking about Elizabeth the First. And instead of writing Elizabeth the First for shorthand, I put Liz One. I'm like, it's now got me calling the monarchy by a sort of Doctor Who slang code name. Obviously, I would never do that in an official assignment or anything. And what I'm writing about has nothing to do with the monarchy. But it was it was it was a fact that came up, and I thought I'd take note of it, and I put Liz One. So it has warped me in that way, you know, long live Liz too. Um, I am a bit of a monarchist, I, I love the royal family. Um, some people don't, but that's fine. That's not fine really, but you know, we'll get on with it. But yeah, it was really such a really good episode, I really enjoyed it. Very creepy, kind of eerie, quite original compared to a lot of the others. As I said, the creatures are great, the plot is fantastic. Really good platform for giving us Amy and of course introducing us further to Matt. At this point, I was still a bit like, Matt, go away. You know, you guys know that I absolutely adore Matt Smith. Not as much as David, but I think he's a fantastic doctor and in many ways a more preferred doctor. I think he actually has the personality of the doctor more now than I think what David did. Um, and that's a ar very, very arguable statement there. So we won't get into that too much. But at this point I was still learning about Matt and I was still like, oh, I prefer David. But looking back, I really admire Matt's performance in this episode a lot. He is very fantastic in it. Yeah, um, please feel free to leave comments and let me know your thoughts on this episode. Then we have um, episode 3 and episode 4. Really looking forward to doing a specific few series 5 episodes, which I'll talk about when I reach them. And um, that's it for just now, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!